Developed as one of the earliest oversized transport aircraft ever built, the Blackburn Beverly, despite its gruff and utilitarian looks, was a model based less on aesthetic appeal and more overall practicality, delivering to the RAF a slab-sided, bulky but extremely flexible design that would help to maintain Britain's place on the world stage during the fading years of the Empire, although regardless of its many endearing features, the aircraft would rapidly be surpassed by American competitors, and fall into obscurity as its 1950s technology and strange dimensions quickly made it an outlier of military strategic transports. The story of the Beverly begins at the end of World War II in 1945, when during that year, General Aircraft Limited, a Hanworth-based aircraft manufacturer known most famously for its GAL-42 Signet trainer, conducted a design study into the lack of a suitable large transport aircraft that had been used during the conflict to carry out strategic airlifts and drop troops into battle, most of which comprised hasty conversions from either civilian models, such as the military version of the Douglas DC-3 known as the C-47 Skytrain or Dakota, or bombers such as the Vickers Warwick, a transport version of the famous Vickers Wellington bomber, general aircraft having contributed to wartime transport aircraft by way of developing the gigantic Hamilcar tank-carrying glider, most of which were built by subcontractors and also gave rise to a powered variant of the Mark 10, which was fitted with two Bristol Mercury radial piston engines for use in the Pacific War. Based on their experience with the Hamilcar, General Aircraft opted to develop a twin-finned, four-engined, fixed-undercarriage pod and boom aircraft with a detachable cargo compartment, with subsequent research seeing the detachable cargo compartment dropped in favour of a fixed freight area, but retaining the same layout, this early work in creating a large cargo aircraft for military contracts being well-timed, as in 1946, the Air Ministry issued specification C-346, which called for a medium-range tactical transport which could safely use small airfields. General Aircraft submitting a refined version of its design that was christened the GAL-60 Universal Freighter, and in 1948 the company was awarded a contract to build two prototypes, although the second prototype was later cancelled. General Aircraft's contract win, though, presented significant logistical problems, as the firm had only limited assembly space that was more attuned to the creation of small gliders and powered trainers, with larger models such as the aforementioned Hamilcar being outsourced to various subcontractors for assembly the solution being for the firm to find a partner in order to help bring the design to fruition, leading the company into talks with Blackburn Aircraft Limited of Bruff, Yorkshire, a long-standing name in the world of British aviation, which had built a slew of fighters and bombers for both World War I and World War II with mixed results, among its more famous creations being the notorious Blackburn Twin Blackburn Zeppelin Hunter of 1915, which had a propensity to either fall to pieces or catch fire due to its hasty marriage of two Blackburn Type Ls side by side, the Blackburn Rock of 1938, a sluggish and heavy-handling turret fighter that had been clumsily converted from a dive-bomber design and saw little frontline use, and the Blackburn Botha also of 1938, which was infamous for its unstable design, poor visibility, and underpowered engines. As Blackburn was seeking additional work in order to keep its assembly line busy, the company was eager to partake in General Aircraft's proposed large strategic transport, and thus on January 1, 1949, the two companies merged to create Blackburn and General Aircraft Limited allowing access to Blackburn's facilities at Bruff, which far exceeded the size of General Aircraft's tiny Hanworth Aerodrome, meaning that, upon the completion of the first prototype at Hanworth in October 1949, the aircraft had to be disassembled and shipped by lorry to Bruff before being put back together, although reassembly posed numerous problems as the nose wheel had to be raised up off the ground to keep the tail fins from touching the hangar roof. The simple, unpressurized prototype with fixed landing gear, dubbed the GAL-60, making its maiden flight from Bruff on June 20, 1950, and after illustrating superb flying characteristics, the model was handed over to the Aeroplane and Armament Experimental Establishment at Boscombe Down for handling trials, these all proving to result in overall success, and therefore led to a further prototype with an improved design being ordered. The modified second aircraft, registered Whiskey Zulu 889, differed from the first prototype by way of adopting Bristol Centaurus engines in place of the original Bristol Hercules power plant, as well as incorporating a redesigned rear fuselage and an enlarged, more angular tail boom to provide passenger accommodation. The rear cargo doors also being changed from freight loading doors hinged at 30 degrees to the horizontal, together with a hydraulically powered ramp which took some two and a half minutes to lower, to a much larger clamshell door arrangement with an almost vertical hinge line, and could be removed in order to drop large stores. While the landing gear configuration was also changed, as the first prototype had large single main wheels, with the second adopting double wheels on the nose leg and four-wheel bogies on the main legs, a combination more suited to the rough field operations expected in service. 
The fundamental principles of the Beverly were a cantilever monoplane design with the wing mounted on top of a huge two-level fuselage linked to two fins and rudders by means of an extension to the main fuselage. The two-deck fuselage comprising a freight hold of nearly 6,000 cubic feet capacity and a passenger carrying tail boom with accommodation for 36 troops or 30 paratroops. While the engine nacelles were mounted low on the wing for minimum drag and optimum cooling, and were easily interchangeable. These engines driving 14-foot diameter four-bladed Rotol constant speed reversible pitch propellers, while the trailing edge of the wing carried large slotted trailing edge flaps that were electrically controlled and synchronized, the nose wheel undercarriage being fixed, and the main wheels being situated directly beneath the inner engine nacelles and linked to the fuselage sides by two horizontal fairings. Although between the B100 prototype and the production versions, the latter featured some detail modifications including the absence of a nose-mounted flight test instrumentation boom and the adoption of tapered main landing gear strut fairings in place of the previous straight ones. Assembly of the second prototype moved quickly, largely due to the sourcing of parts from the cancelled second prototype of the original design, with the newly christened GAL-65 by General Aircraft and B-100 by Blackburn taking to the skies for the first time in June 1953 by which time an initial order for 20 production versions had been placed by the Air Ministry under the designation B-101 Beverly C Mark I, followed in May 1954 by an RAF order for additional aircraft, which brought the overall build-out to 47 units. Although beyond military applications, Blackburn also considered potentially developing civilian versions of the Beverly, which would include a dedicated cargo version for commercial airlines such as BOAC and a double-deck cross-channel car ferry in the same vein as the later aviation traders ATL-98 Carver, though none of these proposed designs ever made it off the drawing board. In the end, the first production Beverly C Mark I, X-ray Bravo 259, undertook its maiden flight from Bruff on January 19, 1955, this aircraft and the second production example being retained by Blackburn for additional flight testing, while the third and fourth units were flown to Boscombe Down for acceptance testing and paratrooping trials. The second production aircraft, X-Ray Bravo 260, being allocated the temporary civil identity Golf Alpha Oscar Echo Kilo during late 1955 when it transported heavy drilling equipment from Qatar to Oman for the Iraq Petroleum Company, followed by both hot weather trials in Tripoli and cold weather trials in Canada, the first Beverly eventually being delivered to No. 47 Squadron RAF Transport Command at RAF Abington on March 12, 1956 followed from January 1957 by the delivery of further Beverlies to Abington's No. 53 Squadron, quickly establishing a vital cargo corridor between the UK and RAF Wildenrath in West Germany, as well as providing a weekly supply service to the colony of Aden. Throughout its career, the Beverly was allocated to seven squadrons solely within the RAF, 3-0 Squadron at RAF Bryes Norton, 3-4 Squadron at RAF Selatar in Singapore, 4-7 Squadron at Abingdon, 4-8 Squadron at RAF Changi, also in Singapore, 5-3 Squadron, also at RAF Abingdon, 8-4 Squadron at RAF Akrotiri in Cyprus, and 2-4-2 Squadron at RAF Thorny Island. The various assignments for the Beverly, including the delivery of humanitarian aid for flood victims in South Vietnam during February 1966, strategic airlift missions during the Mau Mau uprising of the late 1950s, and later partaking in Operation Vantage in the Persian Gulf during July 1961, the Aden Emergency of 1963 to 1967, where it provided tactical supply drops for British and Saudi Arabian forces, and logistical support during the Brunei Revolt of 1962, the Beverlys, by 1963, having reportedly flown almost 2 million miles while conveying over 20,000 tons of freight and 60,000 personnel. However, while the Blackburn Beverly could be forgiven for its somewhat less than stellar outward appearance, due to its incredible size and practicality, the biggest issue that precluded this machine from being a world-beating model sold to air forces across the globe was the arrival of the Lockheed C-130 Hercules, which entered service with the US Air Force in December 1956. The Hercules, while not only being a more optimized design that had been developed by Lockheed with such intensity and investment that it nearly bankrupted the firm, adopting Allison T-56A-15 turboprop engines producing 4,590 horsepower each while the Beverly made do with Bristol Centaurus 173 18-cylinder air-cooled radial engines producing 2,850 horsepower, meaning that the Beverly, despite being ideal for low-speed tactical supply and paratroop drops, was only capable of attaining a severely underwhelming 173-mile-an-hour cruising speed, while the equivalent Hercules was rated at a cruise speed of 370 miles an hour, and thus making it more suitable for situations where the aircraft may come under fire from either enemy interceptors or anti-aircraft guns the lumbering Beverly, by comparison, being a sitting duck under such circumstances. 
As a result, while the RAF was contented to make do with the likes of the Beverly and the later short Belfast, it was clear that the speed and practicality improvements of the Hercules could not be matched by its British rivals, and thus, on December 16, 1966, the first C-130 was delivered into service with 242 Squadron at RAF Thorny Island, and soon the Beverlies were rapidly being superseded by the new American metal, which, combined with the smaller but far more flexible and faster Hawker Siddeley Andover, meant the Blackburns were soon being retired squadron by squadron, the first units being withdrawn in early 1967 and were flown directly to the 27 maintenance unit at RAF Shawbury for scrapping, the last Beverlies to be taken out of service being those of 3-4 Squadron at RAF Selatar, when they were replaced by newly introduced Andovers during December 1967, these final examples being broken up in Singapore. Though one example was retained for use by the Royal Aircraft Establishment and was also hired briefly by pioneering low-cost carrier Courtline during the early 1970s for use in transporting Rolls-Royce RB211 engines for emergency delivery to far-flung destinations in the event of a power unit failure aboard one of the company's Lockheed L-1011 TriStar jet airliners, although the aircraft never actually saw any work in this role. In the end, three Beverlies initially avoided the cutter's torch, X-Ray Bravo 261 being acquired by the South End Historic Aviation Museum, X-Ray Hotel 124 being employed as a gate guardian at the RAF Museum Hendon, and X-Ray Bravo 259 at the Museum of Army Transport in Beverly, East Yorkshire. Although due to the size of these gigantic machines, the diminutive space available for most RAF museums, which are usually housed in World War II era hangars, meant the Beverlies could only be displayed out in the harsh British elements, leading rapidly to their deterioration, as was the case with X-Ray Bravo 261 and X-Ray Hotel 124, which, by 1989, had weathered to the point that any attempt to restore these two units would be far too expensive for the limited funds of volunteer groups, and thus both aircraft were scrapped during that year leaving only X-Ray Bravo 259 as the sole surviving example of the Blackburn Beverly, which was on display at Fort Paul just east of Hull until August 2021, after which it was dismantled and transported piece by piece to a new site at RAF Rickle. Overall, the Blackburn Beverly was an aircraft capable of performing many great feats and proved its worth time and again over the course of many years in both military and humanitarian roles, although the Achilles heel of this massive transport aircraft and one which served as the primary reason as to its limited sales and early replacement against the C-130 being its underpowered engines and sluggish performance, which, in the midst of this machine's primary role in tactical situations, meant the Beverly simply couldn't compete with the more nimble and flexible Hercules, leading to its inevitable fall into obscurity.